Hey guys, be here with our next First Four Fridays. Today we are reading the first four pages of The Shadow War by Lindsay Smith. So, um, I'm going to read the description first, and then we will get right into the first four pages. All right. <clears throat> World War II is raging, and five teens are looking to make a mark. Daniel and Rebecca seek revenge against the Nazis, who slaughtered their family. Simone is determined to fight back against the oppressors who ruined her life and corrupted her girlfriend. Philip aims to prove he's better than his worst mistakes. And Liam is searching for a way to control the portal to the shadow world he's uncovered, and the monsters that live within it before the Nazi regime can do the same. When the five meet and begrudgingly team up in the forests of Germany, none of them knows what their future might hold. As they race against time, war, and enemies from both this world and another, Liam, Daniel, Rebecca, Philip, and Simone know they all can count on... No, all that they can count on is their own determination and will to survive. With their world turned upside down and the Shadow Realm looming ominously large and threateningly close, the course of history and the very fate of humanity rests in their hands. Still, the most important question remains, will they be able to save it? In this dark and thrilling tale of power, shadow, and revenge, some prices maybe must be paid in blood. The Shadow War September, 1942. Chapter 1. Liam. Liam staggered through the storybook, storybook village with a fistful of shadows and a mouthful of lies. The whitewashed cottages glowed in the darkness, weak lamp lights seeping around the boarded-up windows, and tire tracks carved the dirt-like road, the dirt road like scars. Trucks rumbled in the distance, but no one came here on purpose unless they were on their way to somewhere better, or unless they were like him, more monsters in his head than since. The shadows buzzed as he stepped onto the tavern's porch. His palms still stung, blood drying. He should be better at this by now. It had seemed so easy in Princeton's labs 5,000 miles away once he'd figured out the key. The right frequency to dip into the shadows, draw out what he needed, and retreat, the rift closing behind him. He'd balanced every equation in his plan, rehearsed his approach a dozen times. He hadn't gotten where he was by doing anything halfway. But in most of his experiments, he'd controlled every variable, calculated every possible result. This time felt more like crossing himself, amen, and getting ready to jump. Now or never. Liam let the shadowy energy rush through him and steeled his nerves as he recited his cover story one last time. No sense facing these monsters unarmed. We're closed, the barkeep called in German from behind the dark oak counter as Liam entered. Private party. Liam smiled, his dimples popping, and raked dirty fingers through his crew cut. His face was perfect for this mission. Honey blonde hair, light skin eyes that shifted from gray to blue, depending on the time of day. He was more than a little rumpled from his journey, but it only added to his ruse. Oh, sorry about that. Liam didn't even try to hide his American accent as he answered in German. It's just, I've been on the road for a while, and I need some food. A clutch of sen senior Schutzstaffel officers looked up from their drinks and turned his way. Liam worried his tongue over his teeth as he surveyed the cramped dining room. Five officers, one bartender, mostly cer almost certainly hiding a shotgun or hunting rifle beneath the bar. Two SS guards were posted against the back wall. The tavern barely fit three tables. The rest of the squat Bavarian building must have belonged to the inn. Only one of the electric lights was turned on, unevenly painting the peeling brocade wallpaper and heavy wood paneling with a greasy glow. You are American? One of the officers asked, his English sharp as glass. Liam's blood froze. S.S. Sturmbundfuhr Junker. 
His puckered expression and needle-like stare were even more severe in person. But Hans Friedrich Junker and his friends were why Liam had come here, why he was thousands of miles from graduate celestial mechanics and Chancellor Green's stacks and New York's Eng endless spread of noise, that blanket he wanted to wrap himself in every night. The buzzing shadows in his head became a steady pulse under Liam's skin, goading him as he lowered his gaze obediently. Yeah, mine hair. You are quite far from home. He tipped his head toward an empty chair at his table, waving off the bartender's protests. I should very much like to know why. Before, before Liam would never have called himself a thrill seeker. He'd spent most of his 18 years buried in one textbook or another, or scrawling equations from onion skin paper like a boy possessed. But the past few years have revealed in him a desperate hunger. Control, his mother had called it, back when she could, before he learned just how little power he really held. You want to be in control of things, dangerous things. You think you'll keep it safe. He hadn't been in control then. He would be now. Liam settled into the empty chair beside Junker and hoisted his book bag onto his lap. Nothing important was in it. If they searched it, all they'd find was a change of clothes, a water canteen, a German-English dictionary, and a journal with asinine entries he'd forged. All he really needed for this mission was tucked safely away inside his head. He suspected, though, that Junker was more interested in playing with his food. Liam. He stuck his hand out. Liam Doyle. Originally from Manhattan, though I live in Frankfurt now. You live here, and your accent is still so atrocious. He laughed loudly, quickly echoed by the other officers. Alcohol and cigarette smoke wetted the sound as it sliced through the dim tavern fug. Junker didn't so much as glance at Liam's outstretched hand or the red grooves pressed into it from his nails. He just shoved the communal tray of greasy schnitzel and soft pretzels his way. Liam dropped his hand. It had been a risk, naming a city he'd never visited, but he always did his homework. Everyone wants to practice their English on me. Junker eased back, picking up his glass of brandy and watching Liam over its lip as he drank. The other officers, though, were still on guard. Most were at least twice Liam's age, late thirties, early forties, and wore the ravages of battle on their scowls and flinty eyes. One held a cigarette like a pointer, the tip turning to ash. Another clasped his hands before him like Liam was a curious specimen he couldn't wait to dissect. And what is it you are doing in Frankfurt, Mr. Doyle? He shrugged. I'm a student. Your President Roosevelt recalled all of the American students from our country. Well, maybe I wasn't ready to leave. Junker considered him, his eyes steely. Even if Junker believed him, Liam still had a long way to go, but it would be something. All he needed was an opening. Well, Liam flexed one hand beneath the table and let the shadows thicken around it. He had other options, even if they'd make a bigger mess. All right. And that, dear reader, is the end of the first four pages of The Shadow War by Lindsay Smith. If you would like, you can get this book from the library. It is available for you today. And um, if you do give it a read, let me know how it is. I would love to hear from you. And um, in the meantime, until next week, be safe, be kind, wash your hands, and we'll see you next Friday.